Hello everybody, in this video I'll be dealing with PT speaking tips. With the help of these tips you can easily score more than 80 marks in PT. If you take my example, I got 89 marks in PT speaking and believe me, my speaking is not so good. If you have seen my previous videos, you might have noticed I make grammatical errors and I make some pronunciation errors in PT speaking and I can't use very hi-fi or sophisticated vocabulary in speaking. This is because I'm not a native English speaker. So despite making these mistakes, I got 89 marks in PT speaking because the criteria for assessing speaking in PT is different. PT doesn't expect you to talk like a newsreader or a university professor or a native English speaker. It just wants you to talk in a manner which is easily understandable by a native English speaker. Means there is no hindrance to communication. So technically, if your speaking is average and if you can't use hi-fi vocabulary in speaking or if you can't use, you know, very hi-fi grammar in speaking, don't worry. Still, you can easily get 89 marks or 90 marks in PTE just like me. So let's just begin. PT speaking contains different sections which are read aloud, repeat sentence, describe image, retell lecture and answer short questions. And there is one thing which is common in all these type of questions is first is fluency and second one is pronunciation so technically in all these section you are going to get five marks for fluency and five marks for pronunciation in every item for example in read aloud there are seven to ten items and all these seven to ten items are assessed based on fluency pronunciation and content so technically if your oral fluency is good if your pronunciation is good content doesn't matter much you can easily score more marks in pt speaking so technically these two aspects are common in every section and marks are awarded for fluency and pronunciation in every section okay let's just start first of all pronunciation you will get five marks if your pronunciation is native like but it doesn't mean the accent don't try to copy accent like British accent or US accent or Australian accent. Pronunciation is different than accent. So make sure you talk in your own accent and just like I have Indian accent and I got 89 marks just talking in Indian accent only. Next is 4 marks if your pronunciation is advanced, 3 marks for good pronunciation, 2 for intermediate, 1 for intrusive and no marks if you are talking in uh, lame pronunciation or you are non-English pronunciation. So technically make sure you read definition of all of these from PT score guide because I haven't included them here. First of all in order to get 5 marks your pronunciation should be native like. That means all, all vowels and consonants are produced in a manner that is easily understood by a regular speaker of the language the speaker uses assimilation and deletions assimilation and deletion means you are just used to the language or deletion means you are using yeah, like you are deleting some part of the word while talking so just don't get confused in assimilation and deletion just make sure it is easily understood by a regular english speaker and it should be continuous speech and stress is placed correctly in all words. This is again important. Make sure you just put some of the stress on important words. Just like if I read this sentence, stress is placed correctly in all words and sentence level stress is fully appropriate. In this sentence, I'm just placing stress on some of the important words. And make sure you place this stress on correct words don't place it here like is in like if I say stress is placed correctly in all words and sentence level stress is so make sure you are placing this stress on correct words and on important words instead of on is in all and and words like these so to get Five marks in pronunciation you need to improve it first of all pronunciation is not accent don't ever try to copy accent of a native English speaker you may make the errors for example if I say cars this is Indian accent and if I say cars my computer always assesses it as a C A R S cars and if I try to say cars 
my pronunciation is always correct and it it is my computer isn't able to assess whether i'm saying cards or whether i'm saying something else so make sure you're not trying to copy the accent second is yes give stress on important words which you find is important and this is very important use google speech to text make sure the 80 percent of the words are picked by google you can use it online or you can download it in your mobile or in your laptop and you can try it just try to speak something or try to describe a graph in google speech to text and make sure how many words it is picking if it's if it picks less than 80 percent words means you need to improve your pronunciation if it's picking more than 80 percent words means your pronunciation is good why i'm saying 80 percent because it can't pick 100 percent words but in pt it, it it does pt software is more sophisticated than google software and then than regular speech to text software so make sure your 80 percent words are getting picked by google this is again important record your voice and listen to it because you may find some of the mistakes and you can easily improve your pronunciation when you listen to your own voice so this is very important record your voice and listen to it because sometimes communication is clear while we are talking face to face but it is not clear when we record our voice so I'll be telling you uh, the difference why I'm saying that we should record our voice at the end of this video when I'll be using Google speech to text and I'll tell you how we make pronunciation errors and how speed influences pronunciation. Don't speak very difficult words in which you are not confident definitely as you are seeing this video whenever there is a difficult word you might have noticed my fluency is not proper. I often get stuck in difficult words. Uh, for example, if I say very difficult words like extraordinary, immediately, so I'm not so confident in using these words. And in speaking, vocabulary is not so important. PT doesn't want you to use high five vocabulary to get more marks. So make sure you use simple words, simple words in which you are confident to speak. This is again very important. In my first PT attempt, I got 47 marks in speaking just because of the position of microphone. So I mailed Pearson and they told my breathing noises are interfering with the microphone. So technically people, those who are mouth breather like me and especially girls whose voice is so soft, make sure you talk a little bit louder and the position of your microphone should be correct. The correct position is above your nose level. This is your nose and nostrils and this is your mouth. Your breathing noises may interfere with the pronunciation score. So make sure your mic should be above the nose level. And sometimes it may interfere with the visual area or visual field. So make sure your mic is straight. You can keep it straight. Do not bend it in front of your mouth or you can keep it above your nose level. This is the wrong position in which you have bent it in front of your mouth or directly in front of your nose. You will get some time to check your microphone in the beginning. So make sure at that time set your microphone on different positions and just listen to it. Listen to your noise and it should be very clear. With this posi position, you might have, you may notice that the voice is very clear as compared to this position. So this is very, very important section and don't make this mistake just like I did. Next is fluency. Fluency isn't speed. So make sure you don't talk way too fast. And if you talk way too fast, you may improve in fluency. Your fluency marks will be more, but your pronunciation marks will be dropped because when we try to speak fast we eat some of the words we don't speak some of the words correctly so make sure your fluency should be average five marks are given if your fluency is native like again it's not accent it's native like means your fluency is smooth you're talking in a smooth pace four marks for advanced three marks for good two marks for intermediate one for limited and zero for disfluent and one thing more you have might have noticed in fluency and pronunciation if your fluency is four or three in 10 questions 
you can't improve it in next questions suppose mm -hmm. in read aloud your fluency in fluency you got three marks you can't change your fluency frequently during the test so technically you will lose two marks in every item of the exam so this is why fluency and pronunciation is important if your content is incorrect in one question you may correct it in next question but fluency and pronunciation it is difficult to correct it when you start talking you will start at the same speed during the whole test don't try to change your speed because you can't do that if you try to change the speed or way of talking you will lose marks in fluency because you can't do that next is native like speech shows smooth rhythm and phrasing there are no hesitations repetitions false start or non native uh, phonological simplifications so technically your fluency means you should be smooth and make sure there are no hesitations and don't repeat suppose you have made a grammatical error don't try to correct it or for example while describing the graph suppose you have said 70% the figure was 20% and you said the imports were 70% don't just say the imports were 70% uh, no, no they were they were 20% this way you may lose marks in fluency if you have said something wrong let it be no need to correct it don't give any false start the grammar and the uh, you know sentence should be proper and next is how to improve fluency read everything aloud make sure when you read newspaper or you read any book or you are reading some something from your mobile or you are using facebook just read everything aloud because in our mind we can read everything in fluently but while we talk loudly we can't just improve our fluency so make sure you read everything loud talk to yourself this may sound silly but make but make sure you are talking to yourself in english just make any conversation with yourself maybe in mirror you can use mirror for confidence and just try to talk to yourself related to any topic don't talk way too fast or way too slow make sure the the voice and the speed should be normal don't talk way too fast or way too slow and make sure don't alter your fluency in every item if you have started at a particular speed just maintain the same speed it will be maintained automatically until you try to alter it don't just try to talk fast in some of the questions and don't just try to talk way too slow in others so make sure you are making the same uh, speed or you are maintaining the same type of talking or same speed of or same fluency no repetitions as i have told you earlier don't try to repeat anything there should should be no hesitations and don't worry about the content too much most of the time we lose our fluency when we just worry about the content suppose there is a graph and we are not suppose we didn't understand just make sure you are talking don't worry about the content way too much suppose you have said uh, the, this particular figure was 70% and don't just say uh, the particular figure was 70% uh, no, uh, it was 72% uh, then it dropped to 30% uh, 32% just don't try to be accurate in the content this way, this way you may lose your marks in fluency make sure you talk smoothly and again don't try to use very sophisticated difficult words because they don't matter you will not get any mark if you use very high fi vocabulary and if you are an average speaker just like me i'm not confident with the sophisticated language i can't use very high fi words and my speaking is not way too good so technically i'm not confident with them and i don't use them because there is no extra marks for your vocabulary or for your high five words so just keep it simple 
next is this is again important use fillers instead of pauses don't take pauses use fillers so what are fillers learn two fillers the fillers you should learn beforehand don't just think I will add some of the fillers at the same time while taking test because at that time you are trying to understand the content. You can't immediately create fillers. So make sure you learn two fillers which you are supposed to use whenever you want to take pauses or you are not understanding the content. At that time you can use them quickly. So just like this in addition, in addition to that suppose you are saying uh, the graph compares among imports and exports those took place in USA from 2009 to 2016. The next, you need 3 or 4 seconds to think. So you can say, in addition to that, so or you have mentioned some something like the imports were maximum in 2009. In addition to that, instead of just taking a pause, make sure you fill it with the filler. Next is, moreover, we can say that this, this filler you can also use. I won't encourage you to use fillers, but instead of pauses, using fillers are better. So make sure you can use this filler. And next is, the graph gives a clear idea regarding. So suppose you are again describing the graph. Uh, this graph compares among imports and exports those took place in USA and Canada from 2009 to 2016. And next, you didn't understand regarding the content. So you can say, the graph gives a clear idea regarding imports and exports. So this way, you will get three to four seconds in order to think something and make sure you always use fillers because you have taken pause for three seconds. Your microphone will stop working. It won't record your voice. So technically, you are not allowed to take three second long pause. So in order to avoid that pause, you may use these fillers. If we look closer, we can see that. And next is, just try to practice. Practice using these fillers again and again because at that time while you are busy looking at the content, you, can, you can't think of any new filler. And you can use two fillers together. For example, you can say, if we look closer, we can see that the graph gives a clear idea regarding. This way you will get 5 to 6 seconds to think about the content. And you won't lose marks in fluency. And next is, I'm saying practice. You are supposed to practice 30 to 40 graphs in 2 or 3 days. Make sure you practice 10 graphs daily. With this practice, you will improve your fluency. Next is make a format. Make a format means to, with for different type of questions make a format in your speaking. For example, while talking related to line graph, you can make a format that I will start with. This line graph shows the difference between this and this in year 2009 to 2016. And next line I will start the maximum and minimum. The imports were maximum in this, then it dropped significantly and reached to this. And the exports were maximum in this year and then it improved and reached to maximum in this year. So technically this is sort of a format. You can make it for line graph. Like for example, you can make format of pie diagram. With pie chart you can say that I will start with the maximum first, then I will talk related to the minimum and then the middle figures. The, this type of formats you can make and in my next videos I'll be mentioning them and I'll be dealing with each and every subsection of speaking and in that I'll tell you how to make a format for every section. Okay, next I'll be dealing with read aloud, how to get good marks in this, repeat sentence, describe image and retell lecture which is very important because listening marks are also awarded from this and answer short question. And I have some of the tricks. For example, in retail lecture, suppose you have li listened only one word. You couldn't listen the whole paragraph and the only one word you have listened. And in this case, what you can do? I'll be telling you some of the emergency strategies in retail lecture. Suppose you have listened only two words in the paragraph and suppose you haven't listened to one single word in retail lecture or you didn't understand what the speaker said. 
so technically in these cases what you can do to achieve good marks in this section I'll be telling you some of the strategies because in my second test uh, in retail lecture all I heard was one single line that there was a book which was written at the time of Napoleon and it was related to people's desperate conditions so how I modified that how I paraphrased that and how I got good marks in listening section as well as speaking section so technically I have strategies and some of the tips and emergency uh, you know conditions and emergency circumstances related to these sections so I'll be dealing with this in my next videos well thanks for watching